Cooking Caribbean, the show that gives you a taste of the islands. Today we journey to the beautiful island of Trinidad, known for its carnival, vibrant culture, friendly people and lush tropical rainforests. Trinidad lies at the furthermost point of the Caribbean. It's approximately 11 miles off the coast of Venezuela. It's a very cosmopolitan island due to its colorful past. Aside from its native Amerindian background, it has been influenced by the French, Spanish, Portuguese, British, African and Asian cultures. This fantastic fusion of cultures is not only evident in its population, but crosses over into the everyday cuisine of the island. On today's show, we indulge our taste buds in some traditional holiday foods that have been warming the hearts of many Trinidadian families at Christmas time. <laughs> Christmas in Trinidad is a very festive time of the year. It is also the only time of the year that the Spanish influence on the island comes to life. After Christopher Columbus landed on the island in 1498 and laid claim to the island in the name of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain, this town was chosen to be the capital. It was called San Jose de Oruna and it was from here that a local Spanish government was established to maintain control of the island. After 250 years, the British invaded and recolonized the island. Thus, Trinidad became British and the capital San Jose de Oruna was renamed St. Joseph. However, the Spanish had undoubtedly left their mark on the island's culture and religion. For even after so many centuries, the Spanish traditions and Roman Catholicism continues to be practiced. Every Christmas, traditional Spanish Christmas carols are sung in the Catholic churches, and Spanish cuisine continues to be prepared, one of them being the pastel. For many Trinidadians, Christmas just isn't Christmas without pastels. The preparation of pastels has always been a family affair, and every year this tradition continues to be practiced. Before the pastels themselves can be prepared, banana leaves have to be cut. The best leaves are selected. These picked leaves are further cut into smaller pieces.
Ruku is the name of a local plant that bears pods. These pods are rusty red in color. Inside these pods are seeds of the same color. By washing them, a local vegetable dye is extracted. This dye is called Ruku. Seasonings are now prepared. Onions are cut into medium sizes. Fresh herbs such as side, parsley and celery are also prepared. These seasonings are then combined for grinding. They are placed in a food processor and left for no longer than a minute. This prevents them from liquefying. The processed seasoning should now have a finely diced appearance. This is used to marinate the minced beef, which is the traditional pastel filling. Salt is then added. Other condiments such as tomato paste and pepper sauce are also added. Then the previously made ruku is poured in to give the meat a reddish color. Last but not least are the raisins. Raisins are mixed in for added flavor. After this stage, the meat is now ready to be cooked. The marinated minced meat is left to cook for 20 minutes and is occasionally turned to prevent it from sticking. The corn dough is now made. Corn flour is added to warm water. It is combined and beaten with a hand mixer. Once the dough is properly mixed in, it is further kneaded by hand. With a slow kneading motion, the dough becomes smooth and of a firm consistency. It is then scooped. Each spoon scoop is then set aside for pressing. Leaves are then cleaned and wiped and readied for the oven. The leaves are heated to make them pliable for wrapping the pasta. A scoop of corn dough is placed onto an oiled banana leaf. It is then placed into a pastel press, where it is pressed into a perfect circle. A generous spoonful of cooked meat is placed on top of the corn dough. The dough is then folded to encase the filling. The folded dough is now wrapped in the banana leaf. Wax paper is also used along with the leaf. The wrapped pastel is now secured with string so as to prevent any leakage. The prepared pastels are then placed into a large steamer and left to cook for 30 to 45 minutes before being served.
time for joy and togetherness, of well-wishing and hopes of health and prosperity in the coming year. As a result, many Trinidadians have an old year celebration on New Year's Eve, where friends and family are invited to join in this festive occasion. Whether it be lunch or dinner, the main course is always the same. Pigeon peas and rice, also called the meal of prosperity. It is said that when this meal is served and eaten on All Year's Day, it brings one good fortune and prosperity in the coming year. Pigeon peas and rice, locally called Pelau. It is said to be the meal of prosperity. It is also said that when this meal is served and eaten on All Year's Day, it is supposed to bring one good fortune and prosperity for the coming year. Throughout the island, there are many fields of pigeon peas which bear pods. These pods become swollen and the color changes to green and purple, indicating that the peas are ready for picking. Inside these pods, one can find on average four to five green peas. Every year, these peas are harvested around mid-November to January and sold everywhere. Pigeon peas are normally bought in their pods and have to be shelled before they can be used. The process where the pods are open and the peas removed is called shelling. As in the preparation of most festive meals, there's a lot of family participation. Usually, youngsters enjoy shelling the peas from their pods. This is a time-consuming process, as each pod is opened and its contents are removed. After the peas have been shelled, they are washed and blanched or pre-cooked for approximately 15 minutes with a couple pegs of garlic. While the peas are being blanched, the coconut milk is made. The dry coconut is obtained from the nearby coconut tree. It eventually opens after several chops. The nut is removed, then grated to make coconut milk. Fresh green seasonings are used to flavor this meal, including onions, garlic and pimento peppers. Sive, parsley, thyme and celery are finely chopped. A chicken is cut into small parts and marinated for stewing. The base of the stew is prepared. Oil is heated in a large pot. Brown sugar is added. The sugar then begins to caramelize and become very dark. When the sugar becomes a deep brown color, the chicken is added.
The chicken is quickly turned about in caramelized sugar so as to prevent it from sticking. Once all of the chicken parts have been coated in caramelized sugar, it becomes a rich brown color. The chicken is then left to simmer for a minute or two. A hot pepper is added and left covered. After a few minutes, the chicken is constantly stirred. The pre-cooked pigeon peas are now added to the stewed chicken. The pot is then covered and once more the chicken and pigeon peas are left to simmer. Coconut milk is then added. After gently stirring, the coconut milk soon becomes creamy brown. Rice is then added. The rice, like the milk, is gently mixed in and left to boil for 30 minutes. Once the rice becomes light brown in color and medium in texture, this indicates that the meal is complete and ready for serving. With a pastel on the side, this must-have New Year's Eve dish is served hot to satisfy the festive palate and, of course, to ensure one's prosperity. Well, that's all for our show today. Join us next time for another culinary adventure in Cooking Caribbean. Bon Appetit! Si quieres que me canta, si quieres que me canta en tu lindo hogar, un paso adelante, mándame a pasar, un paso adelante, mándame a pasar. Yo no vine anoche, yo no vine anoche que eso estaba oscuro, pero mi aguinaldo de este está seguro, pero mi aguinaldo de este está seguro. Yo me voy malama, yo me voy malama como usted me ve. No puedo decirle cuándo volveré, no puedo decirle cuándo volveré.
Cuando baila casa, cuando baila casa le digo lo sé, que aquí me ha tratado, caballero, aquí me ha tratado, caballero, caballero. 